When you try and arm your quad and take off, does it do something like this? Rather than take off and gracefully hover, it just flips over really quickly or just only goes a bit bonkers. Well, there's four main reasons this happens. One, the gyro orientation is wrong. Two, the motors are turning in the wrong direction. Three, the motors are mapped wrongly or in the wrong order. Or quite simply, you've got your props on the wrong way round. I'll show you how you can easily check and fix these problems and get flying really quickly. Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. Now over the last few weeks, unusually, I've had a load of questions asking me why does my quad just flip over when I try and take off? Well, this is a classic beginner issue and I can only guess there's a whole load of newbies been introduced to the hobby from flying things like the DJI Avata and have decided to build their own and just generally have a bit more fun. So I'll show you how to fix these problems very easily and because this is probably aimed at beginners, I'll give you my top tips for pre-flight checks to save you a whole load of grief and ultimately a whole load of money. So the fixes I'll show you are using Betaflight because let's face it, that's the leading multi-rotor flight control software at the moment. But if you're using iNav, Emu Flight or anything else, there'll be similar ways to do the same fixes. And although it doesn't really matter what order you do these in, I'll show them in the order that I'd normally check things in my build. So the first thing that can go wrong is gyro orientation. Now, if you look at a flight controller, got one down here, you'll usually find that there's a little white arrow that points, in this case, forward. So that's the way that the manufacturer has mounted the gyro on the board, so that pitch forward is that way, pitch backward is that way, or pitch down, pitch up, roll right and roll left, and so on. But you may find, for some reason, that this is not how it's configured in beta flight. Now, this may be something that happens by accident. So, for example, you may mount it around that way completely by accident, which is very easy to do. But you may find that you want to mount it in a different orientation just because of purely mechanical things. So, for example, on the side here, we've got the USB connector to connect to your computer. Now, it may be that in your quad build, there's a standoff that's just there, right in the way. So you decide you're going to mount it around that way or this way, whatever you like. Same's pretty true of when you've got the stack under, sorry, the ESC, 4 one ESC underneath, that you may find that the way the wires come out to connect to the battery just aren't to your liking. It's not a problem, but you do have to change things in beta flight. Let me show you. So let's get this connected up to beta flight, get that the right way round. Good. So let's connect to our quad. Now, the first thing to do is to make sure that the quad is facing away from you like this. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be this way around, but it just makes it a little bit more obvious what's going on. So quad's facing forward. If we go into beta flight. First thing to do is to reset the Z axis. That's just a configuration thing for this simulator in here. Then calibrate the accelerometer. And then we're in a known state. Now, when I pitch the quad up, the simulation in here should go up. But it's actually rolling right. And if I pitch forward, it rolls left. And if I pitch right, sorry, if I roll right with the quad, it's actually pitching down in the simulator. And if I roll left, it's pitching up in the simulator. So there's something wrong in the flight controller configuration to do with the gyro. So the way to check that is to go into configuration. And the thing you're looking at is the board and sensor alignment here. Now, I've deliberately changed this so that it goes wrong, so you can see a typical thing. But the normal setting would be zero. And that would be, so let's show you that quickly and if we now pitch up 
the simulation pitches up. If we pitch down, it pitches down, roll left, roll right, and it all goes the correct way. But if it is wrong for any reason, then there's eight presets here which account for, if you look at a flight controller, there's four positions it can be in, four main positions anyway. So there's four, so it's at 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. The reason there's eight, because you may have the board flip that way round. And if you look in these settings, there's the flip options as well. Now, it may be that your quad forces you, because of the build, that you don't want it in 90 degree increments. You may want it round that way, for example, like in some sort of diamond toothpick arrangement. Now, you can use the custom setting down here to change it to be what you want. Now, the way to correct this is make sure that in the simulation that it's following what your drone is doing. When you move it around, it should be exactly the same. And you can fathom out which of the settings in the drop down you need. Most of the time, most of us tend to just fiddle around with it till it works. But they need to match. And it needs to be that when you're in setup page, that the simulation exactly follows the way that the drone is moving. To be honest, I found this to be one of the most common things that happens. The next thing to check is the motor order. So if we go back into beta flight and go down to motors. Now, the order is one, two, three, and four. Here we've got one, two, three, and four. Now, for various reasons, that may have got messed up because you've switched your flight stack round with the 4-in-1 ESC, maybe round that way, and you need to tweak things. Now, you used to have to change this motor mapping. The fact that that's one, and the flight controller thinks it's something different. You used to have to do this manually. And if you check up here, there's a video I did quite a few years ago that explains all about that and how to change it manually. Fortunately, these days, though, things are much easier. You can go into reorder motors. And it's always best to do this with the props off. And you do need a battery connected. Let's do that now. And all it does, you hit start. You just simply have to click on the graphic to say which motor is pulsing. In this case, it's this one down here. So we click that one. It may be a different one for you because it's wrong. This is correct. So it's motor two, that's motor three, and that's motor four. We now save that and reconnect. Go back into motors. And the way to check this, again, you should be doing this with the props off. I'm not going to warn you again because it's too boring. So if you come down to the motors tab and hit that button there. If we just pick motor one here, you can use these sliders to gently, you can see motor one is turning. And we can do the same for motor three. So one, two, three, it should be this one here. There we go. So that's all correct. You just need to make sure that those match what is shown on the graphic here. Very simple. So let's get out of that. The next most common thing is that the motors are turning in the wrong direction. Now, as I said before, this is a cine whoop and it's ducted. And quite commonly, for cine whoops, the motors are designed to be props out, which means they're going to turn this way. Now, something like a five inch quad, then most commonly the props are props or motors in, props in, so they'll be turning this way. So they're coming in this way, this way, this way, and this way. Now you need to make sure you check in beta flight what it's set to. So the motor direction up here is reversed, and you can see the legend is showing the direction the props should be going in. One should be going this way, two should be going this way, and so on. Again, in the good old days, you used to have to do all this manually by going into BL Heli or BL Heli S configurator 
and talking to your ESCs and changing the directions, Betaflight now incorporates that in here. So if we go to motor direction, again, I understand the risks. And you can use the wizard or you can set them individually. So let's go here and have a look. So motor one, if I click that, it should just pulse. There we go. That means it's motor one and it's going in the correct direction. One thing you can do if you've got the props off, something like this, it's not too bad. But if you've got something like a five inch, you can take your fingers off. So that's why you take the props off. It's sometimes a little bit difficult to see exactly what direction the motor is going in when it's being pulsed. You can put a little bit of tape on there, like a little flag, and use that as an indicator. Or just put your fingers on the bottom of the motor. So if you run through these, and what you need to do is make sure that the props are running in the right direction that map to or match exactly what is on this graphic. If they're on not going the correct way, you just hit the reverse button and it will swap that motor. All very simple. Life is made so much easier these days as Betaflight has evolved. The next thing, I can just disconnect that now and take it off. The next most common thing is that you've got the props on the wrong way around. Now, if you look at a prop, it has a leading edge and a trailing edge. And if you come into this new, it might be a little bit difficult to fathom out whether you've got it the right way around. So if you look at this prop and you look down that edge, hopefully you can see this edge here is higher than that edge. And that edge needs to be running forward, needs to be running that way. And if you're worried about which way up the prop should be, you can generally tell because the underside of the prop for normal props will be slightly concave and the top will be convex. So you can see it's curved inwards, just goes in that way. So that is the correct way that you should be mounting your props. And then you just need to make sure that if your props are out, like these, that the leading edge goes around this way and goes around that way for these two props. And then for something like a five inch, you need to make sure that the leading edge is props in and going that way around. So those are the four main reasons that your quad will flip over when you try and take off. And you just work your way through them, check each one is correct, and check that everything behaves mechanically as it's set within Betaflight and check the simulation on the screen. Now, if your quad still goes mad when you try and take off, you may have a hardware or mechanical problem. So it's worth just checking over your build to make sure that everything is tight. There's no loose nuts and bolts. You may have a bad gyro chip on your flight controller or maybe even a bad ESC or motor. But before you go buying replacements, I suggest you try reflashing Betaflight and your ESC firmware and check your motors and props for any mechanical damage. Now, when you've just got your bind and fly drone or you've finished your own build, it's really tempting to just go and fly it. But trust me, you'll save a load of grief and money if you follow a few simple pre-flight checks. You don't need to do this every time you fly, just do them for the first flight when you've changed anything, including updating your flight controller software. Top tip number one, well it's not really a pre-flight check, it's more of a post-build check. Get yourself a smoke stopper. I'll leave a link up here and the in the description to a video I did about these ages ago. And uh, this is a Vifly one. It's the one I use all the time. I think it's the best. It's just something that you put between your drone and your battery the first time you connect it up. And if there's any shorts or anything nasty going on here when you turn it on, it will just cut off the power and nothing will burst into flames or burn out or whatever it is. Saves you a whole load of grief and a load of money as well. Okay, so the first real pre-flight check you need to do is fail safe. Now I'm assuming here you're not building something that's got GPS with rescue mode or return to home. Most people set their drone so when it fails safe, when it loses connection with the transmitter, 
it just drops. I mean, these are designed to be pretty strong. So they drop out of the sky, hit the grass, and you're not going to get any nasty flyaways. But you set it to fail safe on the flight controller, but does it actually work? So it's worth checking before you do anything else. So if we look on fail safe here, we'll notice the fail safe is set to drop, which is correct. Now you can set it to land, or you can set it to GPS rescue. I highly recommend you set it to drop, and that is the default for beta flight. Okay, so let's disconnect that. So we know that it's set to drop, but does it actually work? Well, let's find out. Turn transmitter on. Welcome to HTX. Throttle warning. Yep, that's fine. And connect a battery. Hopefully that's not too close for to cause any real issues. And let's see if we can arm this. So we're armed. And do this on the bench or outside, but before you take off, and then turn the transmitter off. Receiver is still connected. It will warn you because it thinks it's still connected. Press return, and it should stop. And it's gone into recovery mode with the D-Shot beeps. That way you know that everything is working as it should and fail safe is working. Top tip number two pre-flight check. Don't just try and take off. Turn your transmitter on, turn your quad on and arm it. And then what you need to do is with it facing away from you so you can know where it is, throttle at zero, just give it some little tweaks. So pitch forward, Pitch back, roll left, and roll right. Just little tweaks like that. And check that the quad is moving in the direction that you're expecting it to move. If it does, everything's good. Top tip number three, pre-flight check, is to make sure that there's nothing nasty going on with the tune on your quad. So, now that you know that everything's moving as it should, and that failsafe is working, just take off and hover. Don't go whizzing around all over the place. Hover at a few feet, just in front of you, for about 30 seconds, something like that, and then land. And then disarm and feel your motors. Just make sure that they're not boiling hot. They should be stone cold. If they're warm, that's sort of okay. But if they're getting hot to the touch, there's something weird going on with the tune and the frame rigidity. So that's something you need to address. And if that does happen, I totally recommend that you fly it on beta flight defaults rather than any crazy tune. Top tip number four, pre-flight check. And this is one that a lot of people don't do, but if you're used to flying fixed wing or ready control helis or anything like that, you'll do all the time, particularly big expensive scale models, do a range check. We know that fail safe's working. We know that the quad is flying pretty good. We know it hovers okay. So just take it out and fly not too high off the ground, a distance away from you, one or two hundred meters, and just check that your radio is talking to the quad at the sort of distances that you're going to be flying. Now, if it bombs out for some reason, maybe your aerial's disconnected or there's something wrong with your radio or whatever it is, you know the failsafe's working. So, worst case, it'll just drop out of the sky and onto the grass, and you're safe, and then you can check over what's going on. There's loads more obscure things that can happen, but these are by far the most common ones. Remember though, there may be, and usually is, more than one problem. But if you logically work your way through the things I showed you earlier, you should be able to take off successfully and just go and have some fun. Do let me know your thoughts on these in the comments, or if you've got any other suggestions, or maybe things that I've missed. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, give me a thumbs up, and if you're new here, please subscribe. And if you're on Facebook or Instagram, you can follow me there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.